I've made everything from toys to power tools using salvage components. And today I thought I'd show you the process for taking apart a washing machine, sort of in high speed. And then I'll show you some of the machines and other things that I've made, both from washing machines as well as other salvage components. So let's jump right in. I've taken apart enough of these to know to do this in advance, but you can see there are hooks here which are suspending the tub. And there's another one. And if you go ahead and loosen those now, that'll slack the tub up in there and it'll make it easier to get the motor out. There's our start capacitor. Now, oftentimes it'll be suspended uh, up near the console, which would be somewhere down here. And sometimes it's right next to the motor. I think we're ready to take this guy back inside. I'm gonna remove this part here, pull all this off, and we're down to the components I'm interested in keeping, which are these pulleys, this uh, spring-loaded mechanism here, this big pulley. We will also take a look inside of this uh, gearbox here. I'm going to show you some of the components I've decided to keep. This first one is an induction motor. It's a pretty good size. It's 3 quarter horsepower uh, at 1700 RPM. It's already got a pulley on the front which is press fit onto the shaft. This guy is a water pump and it's got a motor attached to it. I am not entirely sure what this is except that it appears to be part of the mechanism that lets the machine know that the door is open or the lid is open and you can see that momentary switch I find a bunch of these in microwaves there usually are three of them in there anyway we've got a couple pulleys and a belt which is a little bit bent out of shape it's been sitting still for a while probably I've already wired this guy up we're gonna plug it in first I'm gonna clamp it down and let's see if the motor works What you're looking at here is my shop made lathe and right now it has a permanent magnet DC motor on here 
and I'm using this because it gives me more control over the speed but initially I had a series of wooden pulleys that I made myself and I had this motor uh, which is pretty much identical to the one we salvaged today uh, here so if I can find a picture of that I'll put it up on the screen uh, right about now but I'm showing you this because most of these components are salvaged this one inch eight threaded rod uh, these bearings come from a exercise machine these pulleys come from other machines that I've salvaged as well as this belt which is uh, you know, pretty much the same as this belt that we found today this is just the prototype version and I will be making a new lathe this guy will be torn down and um, I will build a brand new version from scratch and videotape the whole process I almost forgot uh, I also made a combination belt disc sander and that was also run by a washing machine motor initially I had a vacuum motor in it and that was fine except I um, the problem with a vacuum motor or a universal motor is that when you put it under load it slows down and so I wanted a consistent speed and power and you're going to get that with the induction motor and so I took that uh, vacuum motor out and put this motor in but there's a whole video about that so you'll see that right here in the little card that pops out one day I was over here cutting a piece of wood and um, actually I think it was this guy this is a part of a clock that I'm working on, which is right here. But I was cutting this piece and it was struggling and I said, okay, you know, it's time for a new blade. And that, that is actually the very first thing you should check. But with that being said, I, as I was thinking about ordering this blade, I really wanted to finish this piece. And I said, you know, what if I upgrade the horsepower? And so I did. And what you're looking at is a washing machine motor, very similar to the one we just took out today, three quarter horsepower. And so that is four times the power of what was in that guy. So anyway, I put this in here and man, it just started cutting like you wouldn't believe uh, by increasing the power. Now, of course, you can reach a point where you're starting to burn the wood if your blade is so dull and your motor is still pushing then uh, at that point you just need a new blade but it was really just a fun experiment and it turned out to be great I was I'm really satisfied with the results I made a whole video about this and you can click on that link right there these gears came out of this gearbox which was on the inside the washing machine and my plan is to cut this out and build like a little desk toy and because I wanted to do that this is another potential use and that made me want to show you some of the other toys that I've made uh, this guy used to sit on my desk at work and basically there's a switch on the side and it just spins it's a planetary gear as you can see uh, I love looking at gears and that one's being powered by a microwave motor so this is the motor that spins the plate in the microwave. It's a synchronous motor. And as soon as I took that out and saw that it, fin it spins at a fixed speed of 6 RPMs, I said, hey, that will be a neat mechanism for a clock. But it, ended, it actually ended up in this. And this is another one that I made. This is a hypocycloid gear. And so I will put these on my desk at work and people will come up and just spin them and play with them and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I've made a couple of other ones like this guy. And as you can see the gears are square. But people really love this and so they will walk over to my desk and just play with it. And the last thing I want to tell you about is my clock. Now, there are no washing machine components in this clock, but there are quite a few salvaged components. And that's sort of the theme of this video, so uh, let me tell you about it. Right, here I've got uh, my hour and minute hand and a Geneva wheel, which is driving the hour hand relative to the minute hand. Many of these gears are made from sample pieces of hardwood flooring. 
and I was looking at some hardwood flooring and of course I collected a bunch of samples and then I thought you know I could make some gears out of these and it'd have a nice finish on it already the top layer is really thick and so that's where the idea sort of started and it turned into what you're looking at today the motor in the back uh, I don't want to open it up now but if I can find a good picture I'll put it right here on the side the motor is the window lift motor from my van the cable snapped but the motor still worked so I said you know uh, I think I can find some use for this motor and it was only a couple days later I said man I wonder how fast that motor spins maybe I'll drive my clock with it and I actually redesigned the clock and changed the planetary gear in the back uh, to allow for a higher speed motor and this is the result that you're looking at many of these shafts inside are from uh, printers printers have a lot of rollers in them here's some examples here uh, this one I haven't quite finished breaking the plastic off yet but before you throw that old broken printer away or decide to upgrade your printer there are quite a few steel shafts in there that might be useful well hopefully you found some interesting ideas here whether it be something really nice uh, something you're putting in your shop or other improvements uh, before you throw that uh, machine away perhaps there's something in there that might be useful if you have other ideas you've come up with, I'd love to hear it. Uh, post it in the comment section. Let me know what kind of things you're making. Who knows? Maybe it'll inspire me to make something. And that's why I do this. Uh, I love sharing ideas and seeing what others have come up with. So I look forward to reading your comments and thoughts.